1822, in the heart of Nebraska, under a sky ablaze with a rare meteorological spectacle, Red Cloud was born. His parents, Walks as She Thinks and Lone Man, shared two different Sioux lineages. Their son's name, a homage to the fiery heavens during his birth, was just the beginning of his unique path. When Red Cloud was five years old, his father died, and his upbringing became the responsibility of Smoke, his mother's uncle and a respected leader. The weight of his father's absence fueled his ambition to rise as a warrior. Even as a boy, he was fearless, his courage shining brightly during intertribal skirmishes with the Pawnees. The year was 1865, a period of false tranquility when the whispers of gold from the hills of Montana began to spread like wildfire across the nation. With it, a new tide of miners, settlers, and immigrants hungry for the promise of prosperity descended upon the western territories. The steady rhythm of life for the Oglala Sioux was replaced by the insistent clanging of hammers and the harsh voices of men proclaiming their claim on the land. As the white population encroached upon the Oglala hunting grounds, the U.S. Army set to work erecting forts, forging a pathway through the heart of Lakota territory. This pathway, named the Bozeman Trail, was a direct offshoot of the Oregon Trail, a well-trodden route teeming with dreams of new beginnings and abundant wealth. But for the Oglala tribe, this was another broken promise, and an ominous sign of their land being systematically taken away, bit by bit. Red Cloud no stranger to adversity felt a familiar stirring in his heart. A non-aggression treaty was proposed by the U.S. government, promising safe passage from Fort Laramie to Montana's gold fields. But Red Cloud, alongside men afraid of his horses, saw the treaty for what it truly was, a Trojan horse, and declined to endorse it. They knew that their survival and the protection of their lands were paramount, a sacred trust passed down from their ancestors. The U.S. pressed on with building military outposts along the Bozeman Trail, but Red Cloud led a spirited campaign against the invaders to try to prevent them from taking more land. They couldn't compete with the U.S. firepower on the battlefield. However, the Lakota warriors, under Red Cloud's command, were not a traditional army. They were guerrilla warriors. The land, their fortress, and their knowledge of it, their greatest weapon. So they launched relentless attacks on the troops and settlers, embodying the spirit of the Sioux and their resistance. After months of fighting and many lost warriors, the natives were no closer to forcing the army from the land. They needed to make an impact or face annihilation. So on December 21st, 1866, despite being severely outgunned, the native tribes came together to launch an attack on the largest and most formidable fort, Fort Phil Kearney. After intense fighting, the natives were taking huge losses and were pushed back by the US. The natives started to retreat. Overconfident and brash, Captain William Fetterman and his men ignored orders to stay within sight of the fort and pursue the retreating natives. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Fetterman and his men were ambushed by a coalition of Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho warriors. The retreat had been a decoy led by Red Cloud, Crazy Horse, and other notable figures. Fetterman and his entire command, consisting of 80 men, were killed in the ensuing fight. The Fetterman fight was the army's worst defeat in the West until the Battle of the Little Bighorn in 1876. After this victory and years of resistance from the natives, the U.S. government finally conceded to the indomitable spirit of the Lakota tribes. In 1868, the Fort Laramie Treaty was signed, marking the Powder River country and the Black Hills as territories belonging to the Lakotas forever. As a final act of defiance, the Native American warriors set every fort along the Bozeman Trail ablaze. This a message to their people that victory was possible, even when pitted against the insurmountable power of the U.S. military. In the years following the war, Red Cloud transitioned from a warrior to a diplomat. 
Despite the continuous encroachment of white settlers on Lakota lands, he chose to engage in diplomacy rather than warfare to protect his people's land and cultural independence. He became a spokesman for his people, criticizing the U.S. government's Indian policy, protesting corruption in reservation administration, and opposing the Dawes Act of 1887, which threatened the traditional Lakota way of life. He made multiple trips to Washington, D.C., meeting with five different U.S. presidents over a span of 30 years. Red Cloud passed away on December 10, 1909, in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. He remains a significant figure in American history and is known as one of the most capable Native American opponents the U.S. Army ever faced in the Western Territories.